Hello YouTube, it's Diani. Thank you for tuning in to another video. How to stay focused. So, I think this video is very important because a lot of people struggle staying, with staying focused and even me, sometimes I'll be struggling. So, this video isn't just for other people. Even me, I needed this video myself. So, why should you stay focused? And why staying focused is important. So, see being focused as a pressure washer hose and being unfocused as a sprinkler. And I recommend you actually get a video of that or get like some sort of visualization of a pressure washer hose and a sprinkler. Or at least look at, a, look instead of a pressure washer hose, a laser and then a sprinkler. So what I've written here is, your goal of being focused is to tackle one task at a time. If you are unfocused on the task, you'll be like a sprinkler and be delegating your attention onto other things. So you will never be able to slice through the tasks. But if you are focused, you'll be like a pressure washer and tackle each task one at a time. So what I mean by that is, see yourself as a pressure washer or a hose when you are, or a laser when you are focused. When you are laser focused and you can actually delegate your time strictly onto one task, you will more likely execute that task. But if you don't stay focused inside of that task, let's say you need to revise for an exam, but you are unfocused right now trying to revise for that exam. You'll be picking up your phone, you'll be trying to message people, you'll be ordering food, you'll be eating, all these things. You won't be focused on the task. So you'll see that the revision that you actually do is not actually good revision. It's not actually sticking into your mind because you're not actually 100% focused on the task. So see yourself as a sprinkler at that point. See yourself, see your goal as trying to wet the task or get through the task. If you are a sprinkler, cool, you'll be spreading out your, your attention onto the majority of the things, but you'll never actually get through the task because your attention is spread out. But if you are a laser or a presser washer, you will surely finish that task and continue to the next. Let's say you have five tasks, for example, that you're trying to advise in your side of your curriculum, or you have five things you need to do on your task for your, for your day, for your business or something, something for your daily tasks. If you are not a laser, if you are not laser focused or you're not like a pressure hose and you're not directly focused and concentrated and focused on your task, you'll be hard for you to actually tackle them. It'll be hard for you to go through them because you'll be spreading your attention on this, spreading your attention on that. So it's very, very important that you stay focused when you come to do your tasks. So here are some tips that have helped me to actually stay focused. And some of them I haven't actually used and I will be implementing on them. Or some of them are just things that I just think will actually help. So firstly, staying hydrated. And that will seem like that's irrelevant, but staying hydrated actually has helped me a lot when it comes to working or doing my tasks. One of my um, things I have to do for my daily routine is when I first wake up, I want to try and drink 500 to one litre of water with salt sprinkled inside of it. I don't know the science behind it and I don't remember exactly why. All I know is that that helps me to become hydrated. I'm talking about the salt specifically, but... I know it helps me to become very hydrated and then also it helps with my brain fog. When I wake up in the morning and I need to start doing tasks, I need to start doing things straight away. Drinking some water and getting that down, for me, just helps me a lot better and it helps me to stay focused throughout because my brain is no longer just foggy. I'm no longer just like so tired about trying to do one task or trying to do another task. I'm just like, oh, no, no, no. I'm so focused on what I need to do because my brain isn't cloudy. My brain can just continuously just process and do the things that it should be doing correctly. Next, which is self-explanatory, is plan your tasks. It's a lot easier for you to actually do what you need to do if you actually plan it out. And so you don't have to be like going complete depth where you're saying, okay, I'm going to be doing this specifically, this, this, this. That's very helpful. I know before I used to have strict time periods of what I would do in my daily tasks. I would have like, okay, I'm gonna make sure I wake up at 8 a.m. or something and do this, do that, do this at 8, 10. Okay, at 8, 30. At 8, 45, I'm gonna be doing this. Okay, at nine, I'm gonna be doing this. Trying to actually strictly plan out my, what I'm gonna be doing with my time at every single time slot. It's very, very diff difficult to do that. I don't really do that anymore. I just have, okay, I need to get this done in my day. But maybe that can work for somebody. It didn't work for me personally. Well, it worked for like a month or two and it, I did become very productive, but trying to do it long-term wasn't very effective for me. But it may be effective for somebody else. Somebody can try that. Try and actually put yourself in time slots. Maybe not to the actual T of like, okay, five minutes, okay, then 10 minutes, because that's what I was doing. But you can try, okay, from 8 to 8.30, I'm going to be doing this. From 8.30 to 9, I'm going to be doing that. And planning your task and actually getting those things there will actually definitely improve. But minimum, the minimum that you should be doing is planning your daily tasks. 
One thing that's actually helped me a lot is that before I go to bed, I write on my whiteboard, which I have hang up my wall. I recommend to any of you, get a whiteboard. If you're trying to do anything within your day, get a whiteboard and have it pinned onto your wall or have it pinned somewhere where you can see every single time. So I have my whiteboard on my wall. And before I go to bed, I'll say, okay, tomorrow I need to do this, tomorrow I need to do this, tomorrow I need to do this. And one thing that I do do is that I do overestimate what I can do in a day. And a lot of the tasks that I need to do are repetitive. Like if I'm doing it today, most likely I have to do it tomorrow. However, just getting them done and actually visualizing them and seeing them. So I can't say, I can't make no excuse of forgetting because you start to actually forget the small things, which is actually the more important things, but you forget the small things. But by writing it down, you can actually say, okay then, I've actually done this tick. Okay, I've done this tick. Okay, I need to do this now. I need to do that. Okay, let me delegate time to that. Finish that. Okay, tick. And then, okay, let me finish that and then tick. So it means that you can actually see what you actually have to do, which makes it a lot easier for you actually to stay focused on your task. You can say, okay, then I've delegated two hours to that later on. Okay, let me actually completely focus on this, give it my all, and then go on to the next task. The next point I have is be physically active. And for me starting to be physically active, I've seen it's definitely improved me drastically in terms of staying focused. And one reason is I can actually firstly endure a lot more. For me doing physical tasks, for example, I do Muay Thai training now and from when I was younger, I've been going to the gym. It has shown me that, okay then, I can actually go past failure. I can go past when I want to quit. I can go past how much I think I can endure. I can go past the, what I physically can do. So when you are working or when you're trying to do these things, from being physically fit it has allowed me to actually stay more focused on my tasks. Additionally, the brain power, it actually helps with blood circulation. So your, your brain actually gets the blood that it needs and the oxygen that it needs by you being more fit. If you are overweight, or let's say I'll keep it more realistic to myself, when I am bulking, I struggle to do more things because I just feel more sluggish, I feel more tired, I'm not feeling very healthy, but firstly your appetite is wrong, all these type of things and what you're eating, your diet is wrong. But when you are actually physically active, you're getting your cardio in, you're consistently working out, you're doing all these things, it actually helps you to stay a lot more focused. That's why I highly recommend, try and get your workout in in the morning. Sometimes if, it gets, if you get late or you can't, okay, just get the workout done in general. But if you can, get the workout done in the morning. When you get it done in the morning, okay, now you have your, you've got it done, one, you've checked it for the day, so you've got that task done. But additionally, now you feel more refreshed, you feel woken up, you have the blood circulating, your heart has been pumping, you've raised your heart level, you've done all these things for your day. Additionally, I'm gonna add this one in to get, be physically active, but get ice plunge, ice plunge yourself. In summer, one of the main things I have to do is daily after ice plunge, or at least get myself in some sort of cold. Whether you ice your face after you've showered or you ice plunge yourself in the shower or inside of the bath or you do a cold shower or let's say you go to like a spa or you go to a gym with a spa or with an ice plunger, you ice plunge yourself. Just get that done. By getting that done, all the endorphins, all the the things you need in your body. Like for me, it just gives me a next rush that I'm like, okay, then I can actually get this working. I see it as free caffeine or just free, free I don't even know, just something something that you can actually just get. Like I'll say free caffe caffeine, I'll keep it there. It's like just free caffeine that you can just get from nowhere, just from putting yourself in the ice. Cause after every single time I ice plunge, I feel like just being productive and going straight to work. The next point I have is go offline. And going offline essentially just means putting your phone on D&D, putting your phone on Do Not Stirp. And the reason for that is self-explanatory. If you have so many people messaging you or you have so many things that you feel like you have to do on your phone, you're not going to be able to actually work and you're going to struggle to stay focused. So one thing you can do is either flip your phone or leave your phone in a room where you are not or just put, there's only so many apps. I used to have an app called Opal. This is just a free, um, free disclaimer. I don't get paid for this, but Opal. What it does is it puts your phone on downtime or even just the app, um, you can put your phone with just Apple with screen time, you can just put your phone on downtime. And it really helps. When you actually put your phone on downtime, you say, okay then, this is going to be my no phone work time. I'm just going to put my head down and focus on completely focus on the task that I have at hand. So you would need other technologies. Let's say you need like a laptop because I know most likely when I do that stuff, I do it when I'm on my laptop. So just putting your head down and saying, okay, for this next hour, I'm not going to respond to no messages. I'm not going to answer no phone calls. I'm not going to do anything that has to do with my phone. I'm just going to stay focused on the task at hand. And obviously structure your life around it. So let's say, you know, every single day you're trying to put, I don't know, let's say from six to seven, you are at home and you want to actually dedicate one hour to work. Say to every single person who you know, who actually regularly contacts you from six to seven, you cannot contact me. I am busy working and just let them know. 
Obviously, sometimes your mum may say no or your mum may want, still want to annoy you, but at least that's just the one person there. You want to try and keep as many distractions out as possible. That's the ultimate goal. It's not to have no distractions, but keep out as many as possible. Next, I have improve your sleep. And this will happen naturally once you start to become physically active. You will become more tired, you'll be burning more energy. But still, there's things you have to implement to make sure that you actually improve your sleep. For one thing you can do, and I do think that I need to start doing this myself, but no phone one hour before bed. And I think it's more than that. I think I should say no screen before bed, one hour before bed, because I do like to like watch shows for like, I don't know, like 20, 30 minutes before bed. But a simple switch will be reading. At the point in time when I used to read before I would go to bed, I had the best sleeps. And then also one thing I did used to do was, I got sick when I did it one time, but sleep with not just the window open, but sleep with the curtains open, the blinds open, so you can get sunlight into your eyes. It may sound insane. I don't actually know the true science behind it. I, I like to do like the prehistoric thing like, okay, because we used to sleep out in, outside, like as humans, we used to sleep outside. Then when we was outside and the sun would hit our, uh, hit our eyes, we would just get that morning dopamine and you just wake up in a good mood. For me, that's how I at least visualize it in my head. Maybe there's real science behind it. But when I wake up with the sun in my eyes, I would just feel ready to tackle the day. Instantly, as soon as I wake up, I like to open my curtains and just get straight into it and just get some sunshine and just straight, go straight into my day. But when I sleep with my curtains closed, I sleep with blindfolds as well. My sleep quality was actually better when I'm sleeping, but trying to wake up and going to sleep, I didn't really enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it in the slightest. So now I sleep with curtains open, the blinds open, so when I wake up, I can get some sunshine on. And if you don't feel like doing that, at least when you wake up, the first thing you do is just grab your curtains and just open it. So you can get direct sunshine directly into your eyes as early as possible. And then also with the screen time, try and cut down on the screen time as much as possible before you go to bed. If there's any like habits or anything that you need to do that doesn't involve your phone before bed, just swap it out for that. Maybe you need to read a book or read your Bible or do some sort of handwritten task or draw something. Do these things prior to you going to bed so that you at least you know, okay, I've avoided the screen time. There's no blue light that has got into my eyes for like the past one to two hours so you can go straight to bed. Next, you have cut down your caffeine intake. And... Cutting down your caffeine intake will be self-explanatory once again because the majority of people, they actually don't take caffeine within the correct time frame. I think the half-life of caffeine is, I think it's 12 hours or something like that. I might be incorrect. Is it 12 hours? Something like that, isn't it? Six, Six hours. The half-life of caffeine is a lot of hours. And a lot of people would like to do is take their caffeine around the time when they should not be taking their caffeine. And the thing about that is, that will keep you up at night. I know some, this is why I also recommend going to the gym early because also sometimes when I go to the gym early, no, when I go to the gym late, I still take my pre-workout and I will still be, if I'm waking up late anyway, I'm going to the gym late. So already my sleep quality is ruined. So if I'm going to the gym late, it also means that I'm also waking up late that day. So I'm taking my caffeine late and then I'm going to take pre-workout. Now these two things is going to be causing me to be taking caffeine at pretty late which means I'm going to be most likely up in the night time. But if you cut down your caffeine intake, well, then you'll get back on your natural sleeping routine and then your body will be like, okay, then it's a lot easier for you to wake up because you're not relying on caffeine anymore. Let your body sleep when your body actually wants to be tired and that will definitely improve. There are some people that are very, very hard for, especially if you have like a strict job. Lucky I'm blessed enough to not have to have a strict job. I work online, I work for myself. But if you can find a way to just even get like that midday nap or Get some sort of nap in, whether it's you come home and you sleep straight away or you just try and plan your routine or something like that, just so you can cut down your caffeine intake because definitely in the long run, it will definitely improve you and improve your ability to stay focused. And then finally, clean your environment. For me, that's very important because every single day I wake up and the first thing I do is clean. I'll brush my teeth and then I'll go downstairs and I'll start cleaning and I'll start cleaning my environment because for me... I don't like, especially on my table as well, I don't like working if there's things around me. Easily you can just not just put things there, but let's say you do get to that stage where your, your desk is very tacky with a lot of things in there. Clean it up because you'll be more focused. You won't be thinking, okay, then midway through your task, you're like, okay, then let me actually move this bottle and put it in the kitchen or let me throw this in the bin. Let me do this, let me do that. No, because everywhere is clear. Even me right here right now, my table is clean clean i've even wiped it before i started recording because i don't want to be starting recording and think oh there's a little speck there let me stop the recording and then go and wipe the table or let me stop and just come and clean, clean the table or try and move these things because that's what i would actually do i know my mind will go there because i know that i like to be in a clean location so when you clean your environment 
it means that, okay, you can actually completely tunnel vision and completely focus and be laser focused on the task at hand. So hopefully these tips help you to stay focused, write down your favorite ones and actually implement them. Don't just listen to this video and not take any value from it because this video has value in it. Take your favorite tasks and actually implement them.